The human brain is one of the most mysterious subjects that has kept scientists busy for centuries. How could a 1.4 kg lump of moist pinkish paste tissue inside the skull give rise to something as mysterious as the experience of being inside the body to which it is attached? How is it that a complex network of neurons running inside my brain give rise to this subjective experience of the world? Why is life in the first person? Consciousness is everything you experience. The feeling that emerges inside you when you taste honey or hear the singing of birds or see the blue sky in your singular subjective experience of the world around you. To stay conscious is to be aware of one's surroundings by viewing the world through the constant flashing of images in the eyes, hearing the sound through the ears like a movie playing inside the brain. But consciousness is more than that. One can also taste, smell, touch and feel the emotions that these senses evoke inside them. But a basic question remains to be answered. How do we measure consciousness? Does our consciousness lie inside the brain or is it something that goes beyond our understanding of physical properties? Does the answer to our consciousness lie in understanding more about the brain structure and its complex neural network? If electrons and quarks don't have an inner world, then how is it that a collection of these particles can turn on the light? Quarks don't have an inner life, electrons don't have an inner life. Then how can it be that a collection of all these mindless and thoughtless particles that make up a person somehow yield mindful experience? David Chalmers, an Australian philosopher and cognitive scientist, put some intriguing questions that has left scientists and philosophers baffled. Why aren't we just brilliant robots capable of retaining information, of responding to noises and smells, but dark inside lacking an inner life? Why should all those complicated brain processes feel like anything from the inside? Why are we conscious? Why are we not robots who process all this input and produce all the output without experiencing the inner movie at all? Kalma famously calls it the heart problem of consciousness. Science has been vigorously attempting to ignore the problem of consciousness for a long time until recently. In contrast to the natural sciences, the science of consciousness is challenged to deal with those subjective qualities such as responsibility, love, compassion, freedom and dignity emphasizing the resulting influence on health, social interactions and the whole of society. How is it that physical processes in the brain could give us subjective experiences? According to John Selye, Consciousness is as much part of our biology as growth, digestion, mitosis or any other biological process. It's just that consciousness is a peculiar biological process and it seems to go on only in neural structures of the kind we have in our brains and then it's got this amazing property. It only exists in so far as it is experienced. Consciousness is an indivisible part of a complex nervous system in action. It is not limited to humans and it is part and parcel of the big brain experience. Daniel Dennett, an American philosopher, writer and cognitive scientist, thinks that the mystery surrounding the subject of consciousness is overhyped. According to him, the core idea is that consciousness is not a mysterious property or phenomena. It's a complicated variety of different things and the model that we use, which is our own consciousness, which we understand from all the ways we interact and talk with each other about it. What is happening in the brain is that there are many competing streams of content running in competition and they're fighting for influence or fame in the brain and the one that temporarily wins are what we can remember and what plays an important role in guiding our behavior. There is no place where it all comes together but only competition for influence in the brain. When we tell someone what we think or how we are feeling, we have no option but to radically simplify the nature of our experience. The continuous flow of images, words, feelings and sounds inside our brains is so fast and so multi-layered 
and dense that we can generally only rest and focus on the minuscule part of what is before us. There is a torrent of sensations, floods of moods, collisions of ideas and swirls of associations and impressions that goes on in our brain. There just isn't anything in addition to the spongy stuff of the brain and that spongy stuff doesn't actually give rise to what we call consciousness. Consciousness, according to Dennett's theory, is like a conjuring trick. The normal functioning of the brain just makes it look as if there is something non-physical going on. In the 17th century, scholars were convinced that light could not possibly be physical, that it had to be something beyond the usual laws of nature. Or take life itself. Early scientists were convinced that there had to be some magical spirit that distinguished living beings from mere machines. But there wasn't of course, light is electromagnetic radiation and life is just the label we give to certain kind of objects that can grow and reproduce. There is another view that consciousness is something which arises from complicated computation the brain does while processing the various information it receives through the neurons that somehow consciousness arises from this unique biological computation. Nobel laureate physicist Roger Penrose thinks that the answer to the mystery of consciousness might lie in physics or more specifically in quantum mechanics. What is going on inside our heads obey the same laws that are going in the universe outside us. However, those laws are not something we necessarily fully understand today. There is something outside the computational laws of physics. What could it be? Where is the biggest gap in our understanding in physics? This big gap is within present day quantum mechanics. If you guys are new to the channel, then I do encourage you to smash that subscribe button and turn on all notifications to never miss a single video on our channel. As well as giving this video a big thumbs up by slapping that like button below. We make content on a wide range of subjects and you can even suggest us the topics you want us to cover in the comment section below.